Hello there and welcome back to Chess Tech. So we're out on a walk and uh, forgive me if it's a bit uh, noisy sometimes, the wind or odd car going past. So today um, we're going to talk about ideas in Scandinavian defence. And um, in my previous videos I touched on you know, why you want to play this opening. And recently I've been playing it, it gets to a point where when you've played the same opening over and over again for years, you can get bored of it. I used to play Karakhan a lot, and I switched to the Karakhan recently for a bit. For those of you who don't know what the Karakhan is, we just go basically, it's E4, C6, white plays D4, black goes D5, and we get the basic starting position of a Karakhan defence. Um, there's a multitude of applies white can do. But basically, let's just say white plays c3, black takes a pawn. You know, it just goes from there. There, there are literally dozens of different replies and nuances. Um, and I was thinking, you know, why is it I don't play the Karakhan? Why do I give the Karakhan up to play the Scandinavian? Because the Karakhan's got a better reputation in top level chess, okay? The Karakhan defense played by numerous world champions, it's been used at the highest critical level in candidates tournaments, in world championship finals. It's got probably a much better pedigree and um, the reason was, it was because of, um, I think it was because of this position here. I found that um, after e4, uh, c6, uh, d4, um, well, what would happen is after d5, when white takes, what we sort of get here, a kind of exchange slav. So we're not actually playing anymore. We're not really playing an e4 opening anymore. We're actually playing a, a d4 um, opening. This is transposed. And it could, we could go into anything here. Anything could happen here. You know? This is not bad for black. But what it isn't is that it's, it's not, it's not, the whole point of learning an opening incredibly deeply, and a narrow and deep opening repertoire, is because, so you know what to do on the board in any given position, just about, you know the plan. And I found that I was getting a lot of exchange uh, variations of the Karakhan and I just find that was annoying me. So why do we play the Scandinavian? Why are we playing this move when no no individual in a world championship has played the Scandinavian final, you know? I mean if we're gonna judge the open openings that's what I'm looking for. Validity, soundness on whether it's been played in a world championship final or a candidates tournament, you know, you're gonna you're gonna be discarding a lot of openings. And remember that I'm guessing that the sort of people watching this video, you know, you're gonna be ranging from maybe 1400 to 2000. You're gonna be a decent, you know, in a player that's interested in chess, committed club player, who want a practical position that you understand that you can play. We don't have to know nuances of a poison pawn variation, Nidor, and all this sort of stuff. We just want a decent position. That's all we're asking for. Not to get stitched up in the opening and have a decent playable opening and middle game. Okay? Um, and, and with ideas that we understand. That's why I play the Scandinavian. Okay? So, you know, this is this is my point. So when you you're going to feel deflated sometimes that you don't see the scando in action much by top players, you know. And um, but basically, you know, it's a funny opening because let's just go. I'll show you why it's a strange opening because what often happens is is that even with with best play, we'll just play a classical type main line here. Um, raining a bit here, my screen's wet, so I'm outside walking in a field. The car just got parked on the lane, or I'm just on the side of a field. And uh, um, 
what's going on there? Sorry. Let's go back there. E4, D5, takes, queen takes, knight hits the queen. Now we've got a number of options here where we can move the queen. And in this one, I'm going to go for the D6. The sort of name, Tvyakov, Sergei Tvyakov's favourite. And then we get, say, classic D4, uh, knight F6. Knight three, um, I quite like to play c6 here, and then we, you know, we're just getting a, a standard position now. In this position here, you know, really, I mean, there's loads of options here. I'm just going to castle, um, I'm probably going to play. See what I mean? We're just developing pieces. I have no advantage over white in this position. White is probably slightly better in terms of the development. The fact that um, they need, they've nearly completed development. Um, let's just say, for example, he's going to hit my bishop. I'm just going to drop it back. And then he's going to bring his bishop out. I'll probably bring my bishop out. You see, he's got a little bit of a lead on it. Um, and, you know, he's got a number of options here. This is always an old favourite. But there's nothing here. The thing, you see, what, what White wants to do is I want to play c4. So c4 can come now. Um, or they want to try this old favourite where they want to line the bishop up. The bishop up um, protecting the knight so there's some sort of exposed attack on the queen, exploiting the fact the queen's in the middle of the board um, early on. Um, oh, don't know why it's asking me that. Um, and, and it's the same old, you know, one trick ponies you could say. That, that, that black, uh, white tries to do against black, which is fair enough. That's what you have to expect. You have to expect that uh, you're going to come across a few players that have done some homework on the Scandinavian because they probably lost the game or it annoys them. And, um, you know, they, they've probably got it sus. So, you know, this sort of position, you get to this sort of position, um, let's say we just exchange here, and bishop takes and then queen, we drop the queen back, and now you can see we get here comes the c4 and we castle and in this position white is slightly better it's got, got the pawn center the trade-off is that black has got no obvious uh, horrific weaknesses completed development has a, under, a, a playable position probably going to try and play the c5 pawn break at some point um, you've got relatively you've got some mobility the queen you can move it out and get your rooks in the middle um, you know, there's there's some play here, okay? It's going to be a game of chess. We've got a game of chess. You haven't lost a pawn. You haven't been mated. You haven't had a mating threat. You haven't had to do work horrifically hard trying to calculate your way out of the, like a, some gambit or anything like that. Now, I'm not suggesting that this makes this opening some sort of holy grail. You've got to understand what it, you've got to ask yourself, what is it you want out of the game? I'm giving you 15 years experience of playing Scandinavian over the board in club chess. So I've only lost three games. I've drawn a lot of games. I've drawn a, 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 a maybe 25% of my draws I should have won. My lack of technique, car coming. And um, basically, um, that's nothing to do with... That's nothing to do with the opening, that's just my crap technique. But you have to, um, you know, what you've got to do, you know, no, there's, there's no magic bullet that's going to fix your chess in, in the opening world. You're still going to have to put some work in to learn Scandinavian, but the reward will be is that you will find, you'll be able to focus on other, you'll spend your time on other parts of the game, like, um, you know your end game or tactics or something like that rather than having to work out all the thousand different variations of, of openings that could arise from a certain thing now, if you like that sort of chess if you like that challenge then play it play other openings i implore you to do that okay that is what you should do um you know it will make you a more rounded chess player but we've you know again i don't always stereotype i'm aiming my chess has always been based on practical side because basically we've only got so much willpower, energy, focus and time in our life to spend, most of us, on learning openings and chess. And I have, I have spent more than most people learning and going through openings. 
So I don't want you to go through that pain. I'm trying to give you some before I die. I want to leave a legacy of the Scandinavian defense behind. And like I say, don't expect um, you know, super results from it straight away. It's gonna take some time, but as you get to know it, you will, you will frustrate people, you will get those chances, and you will get crushed, and you will have those people that will just outplay you. And like I said, it won't matter what you play, you're gonna lose to them, okay? So what I've just shown you then is like a sort of standard, typical Scando setup um, that White will play. I've noticed there is one line that um, has come a little bit fashionable recently in, in the Scandinavian, which is the um, uh, King Sai Fien Keto against the Scandinavian. And um, so we, we start here, he four takes, we get the usual standard position. And um, um, yeah, so what happens now is um, White um, quite often likes to leave the Queen in the middle of the board, looking a bit silly. So just ignore it and play uh, you know, knight, knight f3. Loads of options here. You can pin the knight, this is my diagram showing you, but I don't know. I, I personally uh, don't like that main line that much. Um, and then you just get like a, I'm sorry, you can't play that straight away, can we? That's stupid. Yeah, sorry. We go for immediate fee and keto here, basically. And um, what's happening here is um, we're basically, um, uh, you know, in, in, in the sort of position it might arise, I'm just playing some moves here. We get we get a position where what White's trying to do is leave my queen in a board, basically in the centre of the board, for um, as long as possible, and um, and then the idea will be that uh, at some point um, they will uh, lash out and. Um, try and kick me now obviously I can take that knight if I want but I quite like keeping the pressure on um, you can cook it again you could see that you could view this as two sort of situations here one that white's weakened his king side a bit or two that I've I've um I've had to move my white square fishing twice sorry a tractor going by there um we're right out in the farm uh, in the countryside here near farms and god knows what um but you can see where I'm going with this. This, this is tricky. So the idea is to create some pressure down this long diagonal, the G2 diagonal to the B7 diagonal, G2, B7 diagonal, in the end. And um, hopefully, you know, um, I've seen white playing moves like this. And then if I just continue to develop, you've got to be a bit careful. We can end up sort of like, you know, I'm just playing around here. Your queen can start getting hit. And if you're not careful, there's a, there's a moment where you need to exchange queen off or you need to know you will get used to the feel for the Scandinavian about all the different squares you can move your queen to. And so quite often, you know, might, might, white might, might start playing moves like this where he gets frustrated and starts trying to hit your queen at all times and this sort of stuff. And, and actually what happens then is they, they end up sort of wasting a few tempos and um, you can still get yourself in a nice position, but you know, you've got to know, um, you just have to be aware of this sort of basic plan really. Um, and what, and, 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 and what and what White is trying to do with this Fianchetto, more subtle restrained setup where instead of trying to sort of like take the centre and, and get at you straight away, they're, they're being more, they're being much more refined about their their play. And um, you know, if we go back here, the danger is is that they're just trying to leave your um, basically just leave your queen sat on the ball looking silly. Um, and, and if you're not careful, you can end up with it a bit lost and trapped. Okay, so the V and Keto line is the one I need to do a bit of more work and make a video, a separate video on really. Um, so, yeah, so really I've talked a lot about the Queen D6 variation. I mean, um, this, like I say, is just a general recap. So we've got obviously other variations where we've got take, take, and we've got the usual knight coming back. And one, obviously the old main knight, but um, there's another line called the banker variation. We need to drop the queen back here. Now, um, I, I don't actually think that. I don't know. It, it, it's it's okay. It's it's fine. I play it sometimes, but actually, I part of the one of the advantages 
as, as, as the queen being um, in the middle of the board is that so I'm saying advantages one of the um, yeah, advantages of playing queen d6 is that it, it's actually the queen isn't in the middle of the board so much all your pieces can develop it's controlling some important squares it's in the game and and, and against lower rated players to, to lash out and try and get at it or get carried away of chasing it that's the sort of bonus you get you know you they end up um you know getting in trouble because they're trying to chase it around the board and weaken in their position instead of you know just developing normally so um by putting it on d8 it's sort of like tucking the queen away from being attacked which i, I get um so to, you know when it's on d8 is it's, it's much harder to attack but it's not in the game as much so you know my instinct is probably my gut feeling is to stick with the queen a5 and the queen d6 uh main lines because um they're the ones which uh been tried and tested the most and played at the highest level the most when the scanner has been played and queen da has been played at the highest level a few times but you know again you don't there's only one time i think i i tend to um go for queen d8 and and that is um when white goes through a very aggressive setup where they play d4 and let's just say you develop here nicely and sometimes they like to hit with an early c4. Now you can play check here. It's a, quite a complicated tactical line where you can play queen e4 check, and um, I you can come out equal, but I don't recommend it. If you look at the computer here. It's only given 0. 0.3 plus three advantage on the left hand side of my screen. You know, put down by my rook. You see the evaluation there. There's nothing here for white, and I feel that that line an unnecessary um, risk and by dropping the queen back it's slightly better it's gone up the evaluation but it's nothing we only for god's sake the queen back there is out of the way and you you could drop it back to queen d6 but there's there's you've got to be a bit careful in that in this line especially if um if um white uh goes for uh, let's just say, for example, we have um, Queen, let's just go back, sorry, a few moves here. White looks like they're going to um, just do a standard plan, and um, let's say you just do something like this, and then they go for something, let's just say something like this, and you do something like this, and, um, and then they can play this move here and what what you've got with that is um, an issue now where the Queen's sort of um again it's not winning or anything instantly for white it's just slightly uncomfortable you can see the evaluation you know I can play the check here but you see what I mean look at the evaluation it's gone up a bit it, it, it's I don't recommend it um, I prefer the idea of just dropping the queen back out of the way, okay, and, and just letting, if white wants to, so white might continue normally like this, you can play this, and yeah, okay, white is slightly better, but white's always going to be slightly better, probably in these sorts of lines of the scando, but really in a practical game of chess, you know, after we've taken and exchanged a few pieces, I'm sh I know for a fact the computer's probably giving a little bit too much to the uh, white player here. There's nothing in this position. I mean, I, I personally feel that, um, um, don't forget I'm playing some of the computer suggestions here, which is a bit unfair. And basically, um, there's actually no doubt in my mind that you can equalize because um, what will happen in the end, I'm just playing some moves through here, is it will just fizzle out in, um, to equality. Now in a position like this, you know, there's nothing stopping you, if you wanted to, of, of casting queenside. And okay, it's showing white is a bit better, but we'll, 
this is not a practical real game of chess because I'm playing computer suggestions, computer's playing the best move. You've got to remember, somebody's got to come up with all this over the board, you know? So, um, you know, they might use something like that, which looks reasonable. Yeah, they're only, they've only got to make a couple of substandard moves to allow, um, you know, let's say they do something like, you know, something that's not optimal. Yeah, it's not an optimal move by white, it's a quality instantly. Can you see that? So basically, you're only ever one move away from a quality um, in these sorts of positions. You know, you, you, you can't be too precious about um, analysis and, and looking at analysis boards and going, I can't play this line because um, what's going to happen is, uh, you know, white's going to be plus one on move five. You know, I can't play the Scandinavian because they'll be plus 0.9 on move seven. You know, unless it directly results in you getting mated, or losing a piece or something like that. It's, it's, it's nonsense, okay? So don't get too hung up on all that. Anyway, um, I'm going to leave it there for today. And um, any thoughts or questions on the Scandinavian? This is a recap video, really, and some general ideas. And um, sorry again about the noise and the rain. Apologies for that. And um, I will speak to you soon.